brothers and sisters in Christ. God bless you all. This is a confirmation video and uh, an explanation of what led up to the word that was just posted on my channel. And if you haven't heard um, the word that was given to me by the Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit, um, then there will be a link in the description of this video. Um, and so stop this video and go watch go watch the video that's in the description and then it'll it'll make have this video make sense what happened is i woke up and i do what i always do as i ask the lord to show me what he wants me to see um in the word and so i went and opened my bible to uh to a random page just you know lord please show me what you want me to see and as my bible is closed in front of me and what page i opened up to this is how he speaks to me through his word um was obadiah and that and it's only one chapter um and it was just these two verses that stuck out to me that he wants me to read to you and so we're just going to go through how it happened and, and led up to the um, to the word. So it says, The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. And so the scripture that it gives as a as a reference in my Bible right here is Revelation 18, 7. And the Lord wants me to show you guys what that is. Um, so it also is, is what he used to get my attention of you know, putting my mind on America because, you know, it, it says, uh, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle and though thou set thy nest among the stars, and it's talking about pride, and I heard God say, type in America, the proud, or pride of America. And so I'm going to show you guys. But first, you know, with this verse, the pride of thine heart has deceived you. So your pride in your heart has deceived you. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Revelation 18.7. Also, I just want to say that, you know, it says in the word that uh, that the things in the Old Testament, the things that were written by all the prophets and, and, you know, Moses and the prophets, the Old Testament, were written for our admonition um, of whom the end of the worlds are come, is how it says it. I think I'm butchering the verse a little bit. But the things that are written in the Old Testament are, are for us to be warned how God's character is. And so the Lord was likening um, this scripture. He was, bringing, he was bringing my mind to thinking about America when I was reading this scripture. And then, so this is the um, cross reference that it gives is Revelation 18, and it's verse 7. Um, but we'll start from 4. It says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. And then this is the verse that it gave is 
how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit as a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore, so that's that's what it's talking about. The pride in the in their heart has deceived thee, is what it said in Obadiah. So therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she shall utterly bur be burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And so that's what the Lord wanted me to read right now. And so, and so when I read this, you know, um, you have a couple aspects here. Pride, you have, uh, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou shalt set thy nest among the stars. So eagles, stars, and pride. And the Lord tells me, type into Google, um, the proud, uh, uh, America the proud, and uh, and pride of America, you know? And what came up was exactly what was in my mind, you know, eagles, stars, um, you know, proud American. It, it you know, it's, uh, there's even a song Right? I don't, I'm not going to sing it right now. I'm pr proud to be an American, right? And so this is what came up. And, you know, also this is what came up. And this is a huge reason why judgment has to come. And so I thought in, in, in my mind, I thought... Well, I knew the Lord needed me to do a video. I thought just on the scripture, and I thought he was going to have me read a word from, from, you know, that he gave me a couple years ago, or, um, you know, that he gave me a long time ago. And I even told a sister in Christ that, that the Lord's going to have me read one of the old words that he gave me again and share this scripture about America. And so that's what I thought was going to happen. And so before the video, I went to go look for the word. And I heard God say, ask me for an, a new word, a fresh word. And it caused me anxiety because, um, you know, that's a lot of pressure to write something that, that came from God, you know. But I asked him, I did what he said, and I was obedient, and I asked him, Lord, can you give me a word, a fresh word? And that's when he said, sit down and write, write what you hear. And so after I wrote what I heard, I, I, I wrote exactly what I heard and what he led me to write. And that's what that last video just was. And then he said, now open your Bible. And I opened my Bible and he said, look up the page number and the Strong's Concordance um, in the Bible. You know, what the, what the number of the page is. And so this is what it was. And so if some of you don't know what the Strong's Concordance is, um, when they translated the Bible, um, the Old Testament was written originally in Hebrew. The New Testament was written originally in Greek. And in the beginning of my walk, the Lord showed me. Um, I, I didn't know until later that this is what they actually use 
um, to teach, you know, people in Bible school and, and scholars. You know, the Bible says that um, we don't need any man to teach us the scriptures, for we have the spirit of truth that will lead us and guide us into all truth, and he will teach us all things, and in him there is no lie. And I, I may have been a little bit off with how it says it, but we don't need uh, some professor to teach us the scriptures because we have the greatest teacher there is. And it says that, that we only have, we only need one master, which is Jesus. And so he taught me this and he showed me that when you look up a number, so, so every word in the old Testament, there's a number that's attached to every word in the Old Testament when they translated it from Hebrew. In the New Testament, the same thing. There's a number that's attached to every single word in the Bible um, in Greek. And so in the Old Testament, 331, it means to shut and to shut up. It says, to, so to close the ears. And in that word, um, I, I knew immediately right when he told me to look this up and I looked up the number 331, which was the page number to what he had me open to. This is what he said in the word. And because when I called you to stop and turn from your evil ways and you did not listen or want to hear, I also will not hear when you call my name in your calamities. So to shut and stop the ears, right? But this is what really blew my mind. Is 331 means anathema. An anathema is a curse. It says a thing which is laid up as a votive offering, um, a thing devoted to God, a curse or a thing cursed, it says. Um, so it's from two different words. It's it's ana, meaning up, and it's tithemi or tithemi, to place. So it's it's up, to place. So properly, um, place up, referring to something pledged and given up to destruction, a divine curse and and ban and a curse, uh, an oath curse, and. When I saw that, I knew right away because that's what the whole word he was talking about. And I got goosebumps from head to toe. I started crying and I got on my knees and I praised him and I thanked him for um, for the word he gave me, even if, if it's hard for some to hear that this is what is coming. It's, it's been confirmed to me, and I know for a fact that if you ask God it with an honest heart, if that word came from him, he'll show you that it came from him because he wants you to be warned of what's about to come onto this earth. Also, another part of it is, is 1 Corinthians 12.3. Uh, and that's how I knew that he needed me to share this with YouTube because it's what he has me say. Um, it's what I said in the video. It's what he has me say. First Corinthians 12, three says, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. That's that word. And no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy ghost. So, um, and I, I speak with my mouth. I, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord. So this is that word, uh, accursed. 331. So just as a side note, what I also was led to when I, um, when I looked this up is first Corinthians sixteen twenty two. It says, if any man does not love Jesus, let him be um, 
It says, if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. A lot of people say maranatha, but they don't understand what they're actually saying when they're saying maranatha. Um, Maranatha is an Aramaic word. And it says, Lord, come, right? People know that. Our Lord hath come, right? Or, or, or our Lord cometh or will come or is at hand. That's what people think that Mar- Maranatha means. Um, but it says in the, in the perfect tense in Aramaic, it emphasizes the lingering results involved. And what does that mean? It means you're praying as an exclamation of the approaching divine judgment, Meran Natha. So, Maranatha, Lord, we pray. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord, and bring your holy righteous judgment upon this earth. We pray your will be done, Lord, and not anybody else's will. Not our will, not definitely not Satan's will be done. Nobody in heaven's will be done except your will. Lord God, your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. And isn't it crazy that God gave me 331 as a confirmation to that word when literally America doesn't love Jesus anymore? Yes, there are some that do. Yes, there are a remnant in America, but it's gone to the point of no return and judgment is now at the door. So the Lord just reminded me, this is also why I saw this van um, where I stay is it's a scale, you know, they sell scales, but it has a pair of scales on, on a van that's wrapped in a in an American flag and I thought it was so strange when he showed me it well he just brought it to my remembrance this is why I showed you and um, it's also Daniel 5 is what he wants me to show you right now have you heard of the um, the saying the writing is on the wall you know I don't know if you've ever looked up the definition but Um, This is where it comes from, is the Bible, the writings on the wall. The writing is on the wall. There are clear signs that something unpleasant or unwelcome is going to happen. Um, You know, it's an omen, a bad omen, a a portent, a sign, uh, a warning, a forewarning, um, you know, a harbinger, a person or thing that announces or signals the approach of another. I'm telling you guys, not only is war coming and and judgment coming, but Jesus is coming to get his bride and to rescue us off this earth. But the writing's on the wall for this country. And so and so if you go read this this story of Daniel 5, when the kingdom was about to be handed over to somebody else and the writing was on the wall and, and, and judgment was coming upon this king, there was, a, there was a hand that wrote on the wall and it was the Lord's hand and this was the writing that was written. Mene, mene, tekel a parson. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but this is the interpretation of the thing. Mene. God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, or Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. 
your kingdom is divided. It says it, a, a kingdom divided against itself. This is what Jesus said is brought to desolation. The kingdom, the, 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 the country that we live in right now is divided and it doesn't take much to see it. It says, Tickle, uh, tickle, thou art weighed in the balances. Isn't that what was on the van? A pair of scales or balances that were on a van wrapped in an American flag. Okay. And so I don't find that a coincidence when he just gave me this word. But not only that is on this van, the license plate that's on the van now makes sense as well. The license plate said I-512, and I thought that that was really strange, I-512. So I, kind of like the I on the back of the bill, the dollar bill, the I. Okay, so the I, so the I on the back of the bill. And then what was it, 512? 512 means useless and unprofitable. Uselessness. It's it's just useless. In inutility, unprofitableness. So the I of our dollar bill is useless. A useless thing. In the story of Daniel with the writing on the wall, it also said that your kingdom is divided. Perez, which is actually a farzan. Perez, divide, to break in two. To divide. What got brought to my mind is a story that I saw that the Lord put in front of me. Um, it was either today or yesterday. Let me show you. In Nebraska today, uh, six days ago, it says a two-headed snake, a unique find for herpetology lab, for Raro students to study rare reptile discovered in Clay County. Is this a coincidence? Or is the serpent's kingdom divided? It's not just America, it's the world is divided. The world is Babylon. You know, it's not just America. It is America, these scriptures that the Lord was leading me to, to, to speak to you guys. He's likening it to America. But America's kingdom is divided. And I don't think it's on accident that I saw these snakes with two heads because Jesus said, Jesus said, in Matthew 12, you know, then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch as that the blind and dumb both spake and saw, and all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, the religious people of, that, of his day, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by the Beelzebub, the prince of devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, he's divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I... By Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good, except, uh, uh, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad and so one thing i know is satan's kingdom is divided 
and that means it's going to be brought to desolation. And that's what the whole message was about that the Lord gave as a word for this country and not just this country, but soon after the world. All glory, all honor, all power, and all praise to the Most High God. I give you all the honor, glory, and praise, Lord Jesus. All glory to you, Lord God. So, if you're seeing this and you're maybe scared or, or you know, worried about people that aren't saved, that's understandable. But put it all in Jesus' hands right now and let go of this country. Let go of anybody on this earth and grasp on to the one that loves you and that can save you and and pray that you're counted worthy to escape all these things lord we pray i pray to be counted worthy to escape all these things and to stand before the son of man and i pray that i'm i'm worthy of the calling lord in jesus name i love you all god bless you and um And Lord willing, we'll talk soon. Much love. Peace.